Grandfather, please don't use the Vortex Manipulator. It's too dangerous. You could be lost in time. I might never see you again. Ah, you impossible child. Don't you trust my abilities? Oh, no, Grandfather, no. I'm begging you, don't do it. The device might malfunction and you could be atomized in the Vortex. I won't hear another word about it, Susan. I'm more than capable of operating this device. Granted, a Vortex manipulator offers rather a rudimentary time travel, but you must trust my judgment. I shall take a short trip and be back before you know it. Now stop fussing, child. You're all the family I have now, and if I were to lose you, I don't know what I'd do. Oh, what's this? Tears? Oh, Susan, don't be so sentimental. This is a scientific experiment. I believe the risks are minimal. Now dry your eyes. I'm just worried something awful might happen. Oh, please be careful, Grandfather. Don't worry, my child. All will be well. I promise. And I've programmed this for a short hop, which hopefully satisfies you that I'm not going to go off into the farthest depths of the universe. Hmm. If I had a better grasp of base codes, I might be able to choose a precise destination. Where are you going, Grandfather? Uh, to be honest, my dear, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but certainly away from here in both time and space. I'm fairly certain I'll be staying on Earth. Anyway, this is just a test run, so to speak. Well, wish me luck. Goodbye, Grandfather, and good luck. Oh, goodness me, I feel rather queasy. Travel through the vortex without the protection of a capsule. Hmm. I really don't know why the time agents do it. Yes, a very risky business indeed. Well, I suppose they don't have the luxury of choice, now do they? Now where am I, I wonder? Earth, by the looks of it. So, I was right about that. Hmm. But where precisely? And when? I suppose it wouldn't hurt to explore a little. I mean, after all, what could possibly go wrong? Ah, well, the sun is out, the wind is warm, and this is turning out to be a rather pleasant day indeed. Ha, huh, and to think Susan thought this device would malfunction and I'd be lost in the vortex forever. Ah, she means well, the dear child, but she really must learn to have more confidence in my abilities. Ah, the woodland is finally clearing. My, my, a rather impressive range of mountains. Uh, maybe 20 or 30 miles away, I'd say. Hmm. Perhaps a little bit too far off to explore. After all, I did promise Susan I wouldn't be long. Oh, now what's that? Ah, a farm, by the looks of it. Perhaps I can get some information there. And hopefully a refreshing glass of water. I'm all for a stroll on a sunny day, but the heat is becoming, well, rather taking its toll. Well, well, well. A hand-operated water pump. Not contemporary to the 1960s. So, sometime earlier in Earth's history. That's useful to know. Who are you? Oh, good gracious. I didn't see you there, young man. You gave me such a fright. Didn't anyone ever tell you not to sneak up on people, eh? With respect, sir, you're the stranger here, and this is private property. And since I live here, I guess I can come and go as I please. 
Uh, yes, I suppose I can't fault your logic. Well, good day to you. Uninvited I may be, but I wonder if I might impose upon your hospitality for a drink of water. Of course. Uh, let me get that for you. Oh, that's most refreshing. Just the thing for a warm day, yes. I've not seen you around these parts before, sir. Are you travelling through? Uh, yes, after a fashion. Uh, forgive me, but for saying so, but you don't have any provisions. I suppose you could say I'm uh, travelling light. Uh, f forgive me, sir, uh, but are you what they call a hobo? A hobo? A hobo? Uh, oh, no, nothing like that. I just happen to be away from my, uh, transport. Your transport? What, you have a carriage? Uh, yes, something like that, but it's, uh, a long way off. So where are you from, sir? I suppose you could say most immediately from London, England. Oh, I thought you had an accent. Well, how do you like the United States? Oh, so that's where I am. Hmm. Oh, from what I've seen of your country, it's charming, most charming. Oh, where are my manners? We've not been introduced. I'm the doctor. Doctor? You're a doctor. My apologies for calling you a hobo, sir. I'm Walter. Walter Peabody. Well, I'm delighted to make your acquaintance, Walter Peabody. Now, uh, tell me, what's the date today? The date? Surely the dates aren't so different in England? Uh, well, no, they aren't. But when you travel about as much as I do, you find it hard to keep a fix on dates and times. Well, sir, it's the 10th of September. And the year? The year? Yes, the year. It's a simple enough question, isn't it? Well, yes, it is. But I would have thought the year was obvious. Young man, how old are you? Fifteen, sir. Why do you ask? Because if you'd seen the ages I've seen, you'd appreciate that sometimes the seemingly obvious things tend not to be. Oh, I see, I think. Well, it's the year of our Lord 1903. 1903? Hmm. So, exactly 60 years difference. 60 years? Sorry, Doctor, I'm not sure I follow. Uh, uh well, I, uh, no, I don't suppose you would. Well, well, what do we have here? Oh, no. Hey, what's that? It's Frank Fowler and his friends. They're my worst nightmare. Oh, local bullies, are they? Well, you should stand up to them. That's easier said than done. My boy, if you tell yourself something cannot be done, then you'll only succeed in being a failure, won't you? I thought you were a doctor. You sound more like a philosopher. Look, boys, Wimpy Walter isn't reading one of his nappy bambi books. They're not namby-pamby, Frank. Listen, Walter. If I say they're namby-pamby, then they are. Right, guys? Oh, just leave him be, why don't you? Who are you, old man? Is a nursemaid? Nursemaid, indeed. I am the doctor. Doctor? Come to give our little milk shop a tonic? Have you? He certainly needs it. My business is my own, but I see yours all too clearly. Bullying is the last refuge of the weak-minded. Weak-minded? Why, you dried-up old buzzard? Ha! <laughs> Cheap insults. Is it? You merely confirm my diagnosis. Now I'll be off with you. Be careful, Doc. I'm not going anywhere. Least of all now. You owe me an apology, old man. And I mean to have it one way or another. Oh, where well, have you? You're embarrassing yourselves with your uh, childish posturing. Right. That does it, old man. You're gonna get it. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, 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 my arm, my arm. Right, try this. Oh, so you like to play rough, do you? Well, how about this? Ah. Ah, ah, ah. Now stay there. I have something to say to you. You've just been beaten by an old man in front of your gang. And they might be wondering if you're quite the leader they imagined you to be. But here's a piece of free advice. Accept defeat with dignity. Perhaps 
You'll show them you have more than brute strength. To your credit. This isn't over. I suggest you don't risk taking the chance of a second defeat so soon. The human ego can take only so much. And the body, for that matter. That if you know what's good for you, you'll leave young Walter well alone in future. Yes, that's right. Be off with you. That was very impressive, sir. Oh, it's all really rather basic. Uh, once you know the principles. Could you teach me? My dear boy, I simply haven't the time. I have to get back to my granddaughter. She's waiting for me to return. But what am I going to do? Frank and his gang will be back, and it'll all be the worse for me. Oh, that's a rather defeatist attitude, young man. I call it realistic. You've made him angry, and he'll be out for revenge. But you won't be here, and I will. Isn't there anything else you can suggest? Hmm. Ah. Oh, you may be in luck. Ah, here you are. A pamphlet about freestyle wrestling. There you are, you see. It sets out all the moves with illustrations. Could be simpler. Well, it'll give you a good start at any rate. And you just happen to have that on you? Walter, I have a great many things in my pockets. I'll let you into a little secret. They're bigger on the inside. You know, Doctor, I really don't understand half of what you're saying. Huh, I dare say you won't be the last person to say that to me. But Doctor, I'm not very strong. That's why Frank picks on me. Even if I memorize all these moves, how can I use them against him? Ah, well, you see, in wrestling, the trick is to use your opponent's weight against him. Uh, overbalance him. Pin him down and, well, so forth. It's basic physics, my boy. Basic physics. It's all in the pamphlet. Study it closely. I suppose I could give it a go. I think I should be able to memorize these quite easily. If only I were a little stronger, I might feel a little more confident. Dear me, do I have to do all the thinking for you? Walter, you live on a farm. What's that got to do with it? Oh, my boy, everything, everything. Surely you help your uncle, don't you? Well, not much, to be honest. He has some hired men who help him about the place, and he brings in others at harvest time. Well, if you're serious about standing up to that uh, gang, then that must change. Uh, I prefer to concentrate on my reading. Well, young man, life isn't all about books, you know, as important as they are. You must not neglect your other natural attributes, strength, agility, and so forth. You should set yourself to improve them too. Brain and brawn together, so to speak. I take her point, honestly I do, but it's going to take a lot of hard work. Oh, undoubtedly, my boy. Almost everything in our lives worth having does. Now, I really must be going. Do you think you'll be passing by this way again? Uh, perhaps, perhaps. Please, Doctor. I really will give this a go. In a month or two, I might have mastered some of the moves, and it would be good to show you. Well, I can't make a firm promise, but uh, I suppose I could make a brief visit in a few months' time or so. I'd appreciate that very much. Yes, yes, of course, of course. Well, I must be going. Goodbye, Walter. Goodbye, Doctor. And thank you. Well, that was all very unexpected. <laughs> now I suppose I should get into the woods. It would do for young Walter to see me vanish into thin air. Knowing him, he'd probably faint from the shock. <laughs> well, let's see if I can uh, reprogram this thing. Otherwise, I shan't be going anywhere. If only the jetted thing had a fast return switch. Grandfather, you're back! Well, of course I am, child. I don't waste my time floating around space, now do I? How long was I gone for? Oh, not long. Maybe an hour. Where did you go? Uh, America. The United States, that is. And the date was the 10th of September, 1903. Oh, exactly 60 years ago. That seems odd. Uh, yes, I was thinking that too. I met a rather pleasant youth named uh, Walter. Yes, Walter. And helped him stand up to a gang of local bullies. Oh, grandfather, really? 
You said we should observe and evaluate, but never interfere. <laughs> when I want reminding about the laws of time, my child, I'll ask you. Well, it was hardly a major breach. Just a helping hand, so to speak. So the manipulator works, then? Well, evidently, Susan. But I'm not happy about the controls. I need a better grasp, better understanding of base codes if I'm go to master this uh, device. Mind you, I do think there's a lot to be said for the method of uh, trial and error. Oh, Grandfather, that really doesn't seem wise. Wouldn't it be better to spend a few days studying the device? Oh, stop fussing, child. I'll be perfectly fine. Right, I've kept the spatial coordinates the same. Uh, America. But I've adjusted the settings, so hopefully I'll just move forward a little in time. I shall go and see how young Walter is faring. Well, here I go again. Oh, that doesn't get any easier. Ah, there's the farm. Well, 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 I seem to be getting the hang of this thing. Now, where to find Walter? Hmm, well, it's dusk. So, I suppose he's inside having his evening meal. Now, don't make any sudden moves. I'm not the best shot in the world, but I dare say I'd leave you in a pretty bad shape if I fired. I can assure you, sir, I shan't give you any cause to fire. But I might add that I don't appreciate being threatened by anyone. Well, you shouldn't be on private property after sunset. What's a fell little thing except that you're trying to break in? Break in? I can assure you I am not a burglar, and you are overstepping the mark. I'll have you know I happen to know the owner. Doctor? Is that you? How do you know me, sir? How could I not know you? You're my friend. Or at least, I always thought of you as a friend. You helped me stand up to my bullies. Doctor, it's me. It's Walter. Walter Peabody. You're Walter? Oh, but my, you've changed. <laughs> of course I have, Doctor. It's been ten years. Oh, I see. Well, that would explain it. You're taller and you look well stronger, yes. Oh, the muscles. Well, I, I took what you said to heart and I began to help around the farm a bit more. My word, look at you. You have an age today. Eh? Oh, you must be mistaken. After all, it's been ten years, as you say. Uh, yes, well, anyway. Uh, did you keep up with the wrestling? Oh, yes. And I've gotten quite good, if I do say so myself. And did those bullies return? Oh, yeah. Many times. The first time they came back, they really worked me over. Revenge for what you did to Frank. But I stopped with learning the wrestling and I got better and better. Then one day I beat Frank and that was the end of it. Well, I'm pleased for you. It must be a great relief. I really got a taste for the wrestling and carried on with it. In fact, I thought I'd give it a go at the state fair. There's prize money to be had, and a few people hereabouts say I'm in with a good chance. Well, I wish you all the very best in your uh, endeavours. Most of the competitors have a title, so I thought I'd call myself the Wonderful Walter. Oh, goodness, you can't call yourself that. It doesn't capture the uh, uh, essence of what you're about. If you were a magician, it would fit quite well, but uh, not, I think, for wrestling. Uh, perhaps you should name yourself after your town. Uh, which is? Uh, Phillipsburg. Oh, that's no good. Uh, Phillipsburg. So that would mean you're in, uh, Granite County. Uh, yes, yes, uh, uh, perhaps the Granite Grappler, eh? I'm strong, it's true, but I'm hardly granite. People will laugh at me if I call myself Granite Grappler. So not the county, after all. Well, it's the state, then, isn't it? Why not call yourself the Mountain Mauler of Montana? It sounds a bit of a mouthful, to be honest, but it does kind of have a ring to it. Well, there you have it, Mountain Mauler. It'll take some time to get used to. Names are important, Walter, and I speak from experience. Forgive me, Doctor, I never asked. What brings you back this way again after so long? I really thought, after the first few months had gone by, that you'd forgotten me and wasn't ever going to come back. 
Oh, it wasn't my intention, I can assure you. I'd planned to visit you after a few months. However, my uh, means of transport let me down, and, well, uh, I'm here now, rather than then, if you follow me. Uh, not really, but it's good to see you. Did you hear that? Sounds like someone's out there in the dark. I'm going to take a look and look around. Be careful, my boy. Don't worry, Doctor. <laughs> I can look after myself. Uh, yes, I uh, dare say you can, Mountain Mauler. Hey, no teasing. Oh, maybe I should have gone with him. What? And miss out on our conversation? Oh, good gracious, you startled me. Who are you? Why don't you come out of the dark and face me, if you've something to say? And surrender my advantage? I don't think so. Advantage? Now, why does that sound so ominous? Well, because maybe it is. So what are you doing here? I don't speak with phantoms. If you won't come out of the dark, then we've nothing further to say. That was a warning shot. I suggest you remain quite still. I have a few questions for you. Really? Well, you shan't get any satisfaction from me, but thank you for the answers you've just given to two of my questions. Your questions? Oh, the two things you've revealed about yourself. You're an off-worlder, and you have no qualms about using violence. Very clever of you. Well, I know you're an off-worlder too. No one appears out of thin air the way you just did. Well, not on a level five planet. So now you know what I'm capable of, I think you should answer my questions. Leave them be, stranger. This happens to be a friend of mine. And in these parts we may get a point of looking out for one another. Bring him into the light of this lantern, Walter. I want to examine my would-be attacker. Get off me! You look pretty dangerous to me, fella. I don't think I should. Not until we know a bit more about you, that is. Very wise, Walter. Oh, by the way, my thanks for a very timely intervention. Well, my fine fellow... This is what they call a reversal of fortunes. Let go of me. Uh. What are you doing here? As you said yourself a moment ago, this is a level five civilization. You have no business skulking around the place. Says the man with the vortex manipulator. Ah, touche. Yes, I admit it. Like yourself, I'm not a native of this world. But I doubt we have anything else in common. Oh, you think so, do you? And what makes you so different to me, old man? Because, sir, I am a Time Lord. A Time Lord? Listen, I don't want any trouble here. I dare say you don't, but trouble is what you've got. You're from the stars? Please, Walter, not now. Well, I'll ask you again, sir. What are you doing here? Listen, it's nothing that need concern you. Thank you, but I prefer to make my own assessment of the matter. Listen, can you call off your guard dog? This is getting painful. Oh, no, I don't think so. Oh, no. Hold him tight, Walter. Yes, sir. You can rely on me. Now, my fine fellow, let's start from something simple, shall we? Planet of origin. <laughs> Stowe. Ah, yes, I'm aware of the place. He's from the stars, too. And your name? Silas Wenick. But I usually just go by Wenick. Well, Mr. Wenick, why are you here? Tell him. Tell him now. All right. All right. A lot of Stovians are interested in Earth culture and will pay big money for souvenirs. I'm just cashing in. When I saw you appear in the woods, I thought you teleported here from my rival company. I, had I realised who you were, I would have kept my distance. Ah, uh, that's just maybe. But you didn't. And now you'll have to live with the consequences. What? What are you going to do with me? Hmm, I've not quite made up my mind. Please, I'll leave immediately. You have my word. Hmm. Maybe that would be for the best. So, are you going to give me back my gun? Oh, I hardly think so. I'm not letting you wander around here with an energy weapon. I've just promised to leave. Look, my teleport braces is already programmed for the return trip. That gun was expensive. I can't afford to replace it. Can't you just drain the power pack? What do you think, Walter? Can we trust him? Maybe. Maybe not. But I think he knows what he's in for if he ever comes back here again. 
Uh, yes, very aptly put. Mr. Wenick, I agree to your request. Personally, I can't abide guns. Well, there you are. I'll be off with you. And remember, I'll be watching. I'm sorry, Mr. Wenick, but I couldn't stand by and see the plunder this planet. Sometimes, life throws you a curveball. Not every business venture is successful. I'll survive, but I'll put the word out that the planet's being watched. I'll try and keep the other souvenir hunters away. Well, that's good of you. Goodbye. Hopefully, that's the last we've seen of him. Souvenir hunter, indeed. Ha. Doctor, he said that there were others. Uh, yes, he did, didn't he? Hmm. Let us hope he makes good his promise and spreads the word about his ordeal today. And that might make some of them think twice about coming here. Hopefully. But can we really rely on him? I can stop one man, but I can't stop a horde of men from the stars wanting to plunder the Earth. Hmm, indeed. But all you can do is your bit. Be alert. Notice things that are out of the ordinary and then, and only then, take steps you consider necessary. Doctor, you called yourself a Time Lord. Forgive me, sir, but what is one of those? Oh yes, I did, didn't I? Well, the Time Lords are from the planet Gallifrey. They, uh, watch over the universe. Sort of. It sounds very impressive. Uh, yes, but forget I mentioned it. I'm here, uh, unofficially, you might say. So, you aren't going to hunt down all the other aliens? Oh, good gracious, no, I haven't the time or the inclination. No, we must rely on Wenick, and, for a while at least, Earth will be safe from extraterrestrial visitations. Besides, it was you who saved the day, so to speak. And I dare say you'd be a match for anyone, Mountain Mauler of Montana. I think you've earned that title today. Thank you, Doctor. But the credit is yours, really. After all, it all began with the pamphlet you gave me. Say the evening's drawing in. Would you like some food? Oh, I'd be delighted, Walter. But I noticed this, uh, uh, the warning light on this device is flashing. And I really don't know how much power I have left. I must return to my ship. You mean you have a vessel that travels between the stars? Why, yes. Oh, this... Vortex Manipulator is just a, a sideline. To be honest, it's cheap and nasty time travel. I feel like I've just dropped into one of those stories by Mr. Wells. H.G. Wells? Oh yes, the time machine. Hmm. Yes, an interesting fellow, and one I hope to meet some day. So, you like science fiction, do you? You could say that. Well, you're full of surprises today, aren't you? Well, nice as it is to chat, I really must go. Will I see you again? I'd really like it if you could see me wrestle at the State Fair next month. Uh, well, if I can, I will. But believe me, if I don't, it won't be for want of trying. Goodbye for now, Walter. Goodbye, Doctor. Oh, thank goodness! I was beginning to get worried! Oh, really, child, you must have more positive outlook. Not everything in the universe is out to get us. Although, I must admit, I did have a bit of a troublesome encounter just now. Oh, did Walter's bullies return? Uh, no. Walter has dealt with that little problem rather effectively himself. In fact, you might say he's a changed man. Do you know, he took my advice and has become quite a, quite a proficient wrestler. Yes, indeed. I thought you said he was a youth... Well, yes, he was, uh, but no longer. He's a grown man now. Hmm, I made an error in the calculation somehow, and rather than travelling forward a few months, I went a full ten years. However, I think I know what I did wrong. I can make the necessary corrections for the next visit. Oh, grandfather, it just goes to show that trial and error isn't the best approach. Haven't you got any homework to do, young lady? I've finished it. It was all rather obvious. Hmm. 
We'll find something useful to do and let me get on with my experiment. Now surely that's got it. Well, there's only one way to find out. Oh, are you still here, child? I thought you were going off to do something useful. Please don't be grumpy, Grandfather. Hmm. Yes, I suppose I am becoming a little grumpy. Oh, uh, wasn't I? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, my dear. What was that? Uh, I'm not sure. Hmm. Seems to be uh, glitching. Maybe if I... Walter? Walter? I've not risked rewiring the Vortex manipulator as I'm not too familiar with the circuits, but it seems to be a uh, glitching. Not entirely sure why. Anyway, I'm here now. Walter? Walter? I'm afraid. Walter isn't here. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you there. My apologies. Uh. Oh, you said Walter isn't here. Will you be back soon? I was meant to see him wrestle at the state fair today, but I think I got my timings wrong. And not for the first time. Can it be you? Are you... Are you the doctor? Uh, yes, I am the doctor. Now, can you tell me when Walter will return? I'm somewhat pressed for time. I'm sorry, doctor. Walter won't be coming back. Walter died. Today was his funeral. His funeral? I... I... This is something of a shock. W what happened? He was a young man, maybe 25 at the most. Oh, this is tragic. Doctor, it's okay. You always said you had a problem with dates. It's 1963. Walter was 75 years old and had lived a long, happy life. Oh, I see. So I'm about as late as I could be. I'm sorry. I can't believe I'm actually talking to you. The man from the stars, the Time Lord from Gallifrey. How do you know that? I can't believe Walter would be so irresponsible as to tell all and sundry about me. He didn't. He was true to his word. He never spoke of you to anyone, ever. Well, except one. He told me. Oh, why ever did he do that, eh? Because I'm his son. You're Walter's son? Yes. I'm Herbert Peabody. Pleased to meet you, Doctor. Oh, uh, yes, and uh, me, you. Uh, my condolences on your loss. Would you just wait there for a moment? My father warned you to have this, if you ever returned. I must admit, I'd almost given up hope we'd ever meet. What is it? A scrapbook of newspaper cuttings. It tells the story of my father's whole career. I'm... I'm very touched. Thank you. He wants so much to give it to you himself. Towards the end, he spoke about you every day. I put him in his chair on the porch and he'd look out towards the woods and he'd say, Maybe it'll be today. Maybe the doctor will come to call today. I'm sorry. So sorry. Time travel can be uh, rather tricky. Uh, the calculations are complicated, you see. It's fine. You have nothing to apologize for. You lived a long, happy life. You made such a difference. He often said you were like his guardian angel. Oh, he was kind to say so, but I feel he overstated the point. Your father just needed to have a bit of confidence to unlock his potential. So, what do you do, uh, Herbert, was it? Are you a wrestler too? Oh, no, sir. I'm a doctor. A doctor? Yes. I lecture in physics in the university. You didn't just influence my father, but me as well. My father used to read to me these fantastic tales from his favorite novel, H.G. Wells. I was captivated. It's where I got my love of science. Ah, yes, Mr. Wells. And he named you Herbert after him. I loved H.G. Wells, but what meant more to me was when my father told me the story about your visits. 
It never got old. It never got boring. Thank you. Ah, oh, you're welcome. I think I would have been named after you, but my father never knew your name. Ah, well, Doctor is all the name I have. Ah, uh, forgive me, your bracelet? Is that... is that a Vortex manipulator? Yes, it is. Cheap and nasty time travel. It's not the most reliable equipment. Well, it seems to be flashing. Oh no, the blasted thing. Well, something's clearly wrong with it. It could be temporal disturbance, or maybe it's running out of power. I, I really don't know. I'm sorry, Herbert. I'm so sorry. But I've really got to go. I'm sure Montana is all very nice, but I really can't risk getting stuck here. My granddaughter is waiting for me to return. It's okay, Doctor. I understand. I'm just grateful I finally got to meet you. It's not that I doubted my father, but I wanted to see you for myself. See the person who helped him to be the man I knew and loved and respected. Thank you for the scrapbook, Herbert. I shall treasure it always. Goodbye, Doctor. And, uh, goodbye to you, too, Doctor. Well, Dad, he came. The doctor came back. He was just like you said. And now he's gone. Gone back to the stars. I wish him well. And I know. If you were here, you'd wish him all the same. Grandfather! Oh, Susan, my dear. What happened? Oh, I was late, my dear, too late. I overshot by 50 years. Sadly, Walter had died. Such a pity. But I met his son, uh, Herbert, and he gave me this. What is it? A scrapbook, recording all of Walter's achievements. It's such a pity I missed his first big fight. I should have been there to support him, but instead I failed him. Oh, don't blame yourself, Grandfather. But I do, my child. Oh, if only I'd listened to you, spent some time trying to understand the proper programming protocols for the device. Perhaps I'd have been able to see Walter again. You weren't to know. I suppose you're right, my child. But to be honest, I'm rather sad about the whole affair. Well, Susan, I think I'm going to take this Vortex Manipulator and put it away somewhere deep within the ship. Hopefully that way I won't be tempted to use it again. Maybe that's for the best. What's happening? It's the Vortex Manipulator. I... I think it's activating. I, I, I can't stop it. Susan! Grandfather! Grandfather! Grandfather!